Uh, we're now going to take a, a brief moment to listen to our opening song, We Are, which will be played by Rebecca Patterson. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreams. We Whether in person or online, we begin each Westwood service with an acknowledgement that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so today. The Westwood building rests in Amiskati Waskagan, which is the Cree name for Edmonton and translates to English as Beaver Hill House. I am joining you today from Shoe Cho Toe which is the Dene Shoshine word for cold lake and translates to English as big fish lake. Although a part of Treaty 6 territory, the First Nations history of this area differs from that of other locations throughout Treaty 6. While much of Treaty 6 was historically inhabited by the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Salto, Nakota Sioux, the area I'm located in uh, is the southern edge of the Dene Shoshashine nation. While land acknowledgements have become a way to respectfully draw attention to the journey of reconciliation and decolonization, the embarkation point of that journey, as with most other reconciliation journeys, should be to educate ourselves on the journey of those who took care of this land before us. There are many opportunities that exist in all communities for connection, growth, and education on the important questions of how can we help and how can we heal. Good morning and welcome to Westwood Unitarian Congregation's online Sunday service. Westwood is one of many Unitarian Universalist congregations in Canada and around the world, and I'd like to welcome those of you who are joining from near and far alike. I feel particularly joyful to have been invited into this community despite the physical distance that exists between all of us. Following the service this morning, we hope that you will remain with us for our virtual coffee hour to make new connections, rekindle old ones, and strengthen our community. My name is Maddie Webb, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm absolutely delighted to be your service leader this morning. Our speaker today is Reverend Ann Barker, and our musician is Rebecca Patterson. Our service texts are Elara Stefania Gadet and Bill Lee. Today, we will also be graced by Alara with a story for all ages, and our sermon topic is interdependence. If you have a candle or a chalice nearby, now's the time to bring them forward. Lighting candles and chalices is one of the ways that we share in this ritual, and it brings us together even across the distances. Dr. Issei, Issei Barnwell is the composer of that beautiful opening song this morning. 
a sacred message about the interdependence of all humanity. We are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings, and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. You may know Dr. Issei Barnwell as the uh, director and lead of Sweet Honey in the Rock. We light our shared chalice this morning in the spirit of interdependence. Blessed be. At this time in our service, we pause to reflect on this past week. We recall the milestones, the joys and concerns, the sorrows and the changes in our lives. We hold space for those who need our healing thoughts. Community is deepened by sharing with each other what is in our hearts. I invite you now to share your joys and concerns in the chat or light your own candle in silence while we listen to Rebecca play. We recognize that there are some joys and concerns that remain in our hearts. Remember, just as from the wonderful song, You'll Never Walk Alone from Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical Carousel, walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. In the spirit of community, Please join me now in the affirmation you see posted on the screen. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. I now have the honor to introduce Alara, joined by their friend Elm, for a story for all ages. Hello friends, my name is Alara and I use they them pronouns and I have the great 
pleasure and privilege of working with our kids and youth here at Westwood, and of course with all of you, and I also have the great pleasure and privilege of knowing my friend Elm. Hi everybody! I'm really excited to see you today! I'm Elm the Fairy and my pronouns are she and her. Alara! Yeah? I'm really excited that you chose to use the big tree background because I have a story from Fairyland today and that tree really makes me think of my tree that I grew up in back in Fairyland where all my friends and family still live. That's really cool. What's your story about today, Elm? Well, my story today is about interdependence, which is a really big word, but it's really easy to understand, I promise. Okay, that does sound like a pretty big word, so I think you're going to have to help me understand what it means. Sure, no problem. So, you know how I have a bee on my head? Can you see the bee on my head, friends? I bet they can. It's a really beautiful bee. Well, bees are really, really good at interdependence, Alara. How so? Well, they help the flowers grow and the trees and the fruit. And they also eat the pollen from the trees and the fruit. So it's very interdependent. That means that both the flowers have a gift for the bees and the bees have a gift for the flowers. And it's really beautiful. And in fairyland, fairies and bees are really good friends. And fairies also help the flowers grow, but not in the same way as bees. Bees help the flowers grow by pollinating them and spreading all the seeds. And we help the flowers grow by painting all of the petals and helping bring out the gift of their beauty that they share with the world. That's really lovely, Elm. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're very welcome. I also have a really lovely song from Fairyland that I really wanted to share with all of you today. Oh, I know our friends love hearing songs from Fairyland, right everybody? Yeah, I'm sure they would be really happy to hear a new song. Okay, it's a really, really, one of my favorite songs, really. And I learned it from my great, great, great grandmother fairy, because fairies actually live a really, really long time. And my great, great grandmother fairy still lives in the tree in fairyland, and she sings this song to the baby fairies to help them under dis understand interdependence. Well, I'm sure that all of our friends are going to be very happy to hear the song that your great-great-grandmother fairy shared with you. Yeah, okay, and I'm going to sing it three times because I know you like the number three. I do like the number three. It's one of my favorite numbers, and it's a good song to sing three times. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Do you know the hand symbols to this song? I think I do. I think you taught them to me, so I'm going to try. So friends at home, you can also try the hand symbols that go along with this song and sing along because we're going to sing it three times. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the fire that warms you, the water that flows, spirit move through you, mind that knows, the earth below and above the air, everything's connected everywhere. Okay, that's the first song. First time we're going to sing it. So, Alar, do you want to show us the hand symbols one more time? Sure, okay. You sing along, though. I will. Okay. The fire that warms us, the water that flows, the spirit that moves, and the mind that knows the earth below and the, above the air. Everything's connected everywhere. The fire that warms and the water that flows. The spirit that moves and the mind that knows. Below the earth and above the air. Everything's connected everywhere. 
I really like that song, Elm, and I think it really did help me understand the big word interconnected a little bit better. Or interdependent, sorry. Pretty similar words. It just means everything's connected, and also that the gifts that we give are given back to us from life, the different parts of life. Just like the bees and the flowers gift things to each other, and the fairies and the humans do too. That's exactly right. That's my story for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you really enjoyed our song that my great-great-grandmother fairy taught me when I was little. Thank you for spending time with us. We love you a lot. Have a great rest of your time. Bye, everybody. Bye, Elm. Westwood Unitarian is entirely self-governed and financially supported by the generosity of our members and friends. Donations are accepted and appreciated at any time by following the instructions on the slide or available on the webpage. In celebration of the programs, events, and activities that we support throughout the year, please join Rebecca in singing our offertory song while remaining on mute. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. Orange and green have been a part of Westwood for many years now. They represent our second and fourth principles, which go like this. The second principle is justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Offer fairness and compassion to everyone. Hello. And the fourth principle is a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Grow by exploring new ideas together. Well, good morning, friends. We've got a service going on here. What are you up to? We heard that Elm was coming and we wanted out of the closet and back into the service. Besides, you're using that portrait of us on the slide and I'm pretty sure we should get some airtime. Okay, well, thanks for the reminder that you like to be a part of things. Our service this morning is about interdependence. Do you have anything you'd like to say on the topic? Well, that's what our portrait shows over there on the slide, how we need one another and how we help one another. When one of us needs something, the other one pitches in. That's right, I was feeling a little down that day and Green cheered me right up. Then they made me a snack and gave me a hug and I felt a lot better. And it helps me to feel useful when I can do something for a friend. It's important to feel like you can make a difference in the world. Well, thank you, friends. I think these are great examples of interdependence and thanks for letting me use your portrait. It helps people to see what we're talking about. Pro tip, it's tricky to unmute yourself with a puppet on your hand. These are the words of Dr. Issei Barnwell. Each and every one of us stands atop a lineage that has had at its core mothers, and fathers and teachers and dreamers and shamans and healers and builders and warriors and thinkers and, and, and. So in spite of our uniqueness, we come from and share every experience humankind has ever had. In this way, we are one. Green and orange are a part of our lineage here at Westwood. They first arrived in 2018, and they've been helping us to reflect and focus on our Unitarian Universalist principles. 
Larger portraits of them hang on the walls in the church sanctuary, and we hope to add their new friend for the eighth principle sometime very soon. In the meantime, we make the best of this magical interdependent web of all electronics and gather here on Zoom. Our theme this month is the seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Folks have a tendency to think of it as the nature principle, the interdependent web of all existence. And it certainly has been used to bring our natural environment into our conversations and our worship, as well as into our concerns and our gratitude. The Canadian Unitarian Council, our national organization, has a vision, it's on the screen there as well, that says, as Canadian Unitarians, we envision a world in which our interdependence calls us to love and justice. And that's why these three images are up this morning all together, because interdependence is more than the love and beauty and responsibility we have to nature and more than the love and caring we share with people and puppets who are important or close to us. Our interdependence, respect for our interdependent web calls us to love and to gratitude and appreciation and care, and also to justice, to a balanced way of sharing resources so we might all thrive and none needlessly suffer. Our service last week on the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer focused heavily on the natural world and the intersections of indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants. And more than just nature, it spoke to the interdependence between people and the land and everything related to one or the other. We cannot separate people out from nature. Each has profound impacts on the other and requires a balanced relationship if either is going to thrive. We're just big animals with big brains, really, in the grand scheme of things. So today we're looking at the idea of interdependence from the seventh principle to see how we situate ourselves, the human animals, within this precious web we speak about. But first, let's hear that quote from Dr. Barnwell again. Each and every one of us stands atop a lineage that has had at its core mothers and fathers and teachers and dreamers and shamans and healers and builders and warriors and thinkers and and, and. So in spite of our uniqueness, we come from and share every experience that humankind has ever had. In this way, we are one. I love that idea that in spite of our uniqueness, we come from and share every experience that humankind has ever had. Let's sit with that for a moment. So in spite of our uniqueness, we come from and share every experience that humankind has ever had. In this way, we are already one. Kimmerer wrote eloquently about how much it meant to her to be reconnected to the indigenous teachings and language and ritual of her ancestors and how being of blended ancestry meant that multiple cultures were within her, influencing her, and at times pulling her in different directions until she was able to introduce her parts to one another, to weave the stories and the identities together to shape her own sense of who she is, to find her own way of moving through the world, old and new, in tension and in harmony. Isn't this true in some degree of all of us? We're created in the image of our ancestors, physically and culturally, even if we never knew them. Parts of them, where they came from, their physical traits, the water they drank, all the ways they experienced life have shaped our DNA. Have you had that experience of finding something familiar or resonant even though it isn't a part of your remembered reality? You're gonna make me laugh, Alara. Maybe music or a landscape 
or a cultural practice that speaks to you in a way that you can't immediately explain. And then you learn later, maybe years later from family or from a book or a movie, that this thing that hooks you is somehow a part of your cultural heritage. I feel that way about the prairie, the flat land and the big sky where my whole being breathes a sigh of relief. Even though I grew up on the West Coast, I seem to vibrate at the speed of prairie. People tease me about how I moved to the wrong direction, that everyone wants to go West. But I love those open fields of grasses and the sharp flash of lightning that illuminates everything for miles. Also, it seems like prairies think in miles, not kilometers. Turns out my grandmother grew up on the Saskatchewan prairie. My dad never lived there. It's not in his event memory, but it's a piece of who we are and who I am. Composer Jim Scott wrote these words entitled The Oneness of Everything. Far beyond the grasp of hands or light to meet the eye, past the reaches of the mind, there find the key to nature's harmony in an architecture so entwined. Like the birds whose patterns grace the sky and carry all who join in love expanding, the message of peace will rise in flight, taking the weight of the world upon its wings in the oneness of everything. Peace is in the dance of trees who stir before the first breath of wind is even perceived. Trust in the song becoming one with the dance and all mysteries can be believed. Songs of lives long past that touch our own are written in the earth ever giving and now to maintain the harmony gives to us all lives worth living for the oneness of everything. Still, we seek to find a truth that we might understand and reduce to terms defined. Vast and immeasurable time and space all so overwhelmingly designed. Oh, passing years, just might I know the faith that winters in the heart to be reborn in spring. To hear and to feel the pulse of life enters my soul as a song to sing of the oneness of everything. Before we continue, I wanna pause for a minute and cast a vision of peace for the people of the world. There is so much uncertainty, so much upheaval. Please join me in a prayer or a promise that we offer to the world in this tenuous moment. If you would take a breath and check in within for that spark of life that is sustaining you, for the place where you know essentially that you're okay in this moment. And if you would imagine a gentle stream of light coming from that place, sending it out to someone who needs it, directing it to someone specific or send it freely to wherever it is needed. We'll take a couple of breaths together. Here is our dream we cast. Spirit of life and truth and love, we hold the people of the earth in our hearts and minds. All those who are scared or suffering, all those who are facing uncertainty, all those who don't know what to do next. We send love and light out to these fragile hearts. We see the people experiencing or being threatened with war and those who are being compelled to fight it. We see the people who are suffering from the pandemic and those who have reached the limits of their tolerance. We see poverty 
and hunger and illness and fear. And those who are unable to help when they want nothing more. We send love and light out to these fragile hearts. We share our love and light as best we can, whenever we can, knowing that we are all one together in the same story. May we find ways to help. May we receive the help we need. May we all know peace. May it be so. The oneness of everything. Respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Interdependent, not interconnected. Well, interconnected as well, but interdependent means more. Interconnected is to share space, real or virtual, to have parts or joints or experiences in common. Interdependent is to need one another, to impact one another, whether intentional or not, to have our futures bound up together. Kimmerer wrote about it in Braiding Sweetgrass when she talked about corn and planting the three sisters garden three seeds or kernels in one place, corn, bean, and squash. First, the corn comes up and is about six inches high before the bean pokes through. Corn needs a head start to gain some stability before it provides its stalk as a trellis to the climbing bean. Bean twists around, growing higher and higher with the corn supported and abundant. It might be a couple of weeks still before squash emerges, and rather than growing up like the others, it spreads low and wide, holding in moisture and keeping down weeds. The chemistry is poetic, as the author tells it, all the symbiotic happenings that nourish and protect and sustain one another. At first glance, the bean looks to be taking advantage but beneath the surface is another story. Down in the soil, bean produces the nitrogen that all three of them need to live if they will flourish. Three sisters, each with their own tasks, each with their unique ways of being, reliant on one another if they are to reach their full potential. Can you picture this garden? Corn, bean, and squash. It's like beacons announcing, here there is life. Immediate food in the fresh beans, then later season harvesting corn and squash. All three keep easily over the cold months, corn and beans if canned or dried, squash in a cool cellar, all three together making a balanced diet, all three better when they are a set. You can grow them separately, of course. They still grow, but the beans need to be staked up and the weeds need to be tended. Squash and corn take a lot of space with very little immediate return. And where does the nitrogen come from? What keeps the water from evaporating on those hot days necessary for ripening the corn? Kimmerer writes about the fourth sister in the equation, the woman herself who planted the seeds. They would not be together if she did not place them there. They would not be placed there if she had not been given the precious pouch containing her culture's ancient wisdom three seeds, three embryos. In contrast, on a neighbor's farm, there is a field of corn all in tall, straight rows, just corn. That's how industry plants. You can't easily harvest a field of mixed crops, not with machinery anyway. The fourth sister has been lost from the equation and taken with her the second and the third. Think about 
what you know of forests, how it's not just trees and soil and birds. It's lichens and mosses and microbes and insects, shrubs and different species of trees, flowers and berries and roots and cones, squirrels and slugs. And when a tree falls, as it eventually must, it feeds what will follow and opens a gap where light gets in to encourage and permit new growth, to create a space for change. We know that when logging clears a forest, we can reestablish trees, but it's not so easy to reestablish an entire ecosystem. Where is the nourishment for the soil, the shade from the sun, the seeds and spores and roots and tubers? Where are the birds and bugs and bees? It's easy to understand that if we raise a forest and put only one part back, we have a tree field, not a forest. And we know that nature is creative and relentless and a little bit sneaky, and maybe those nutrients and seeds will arrive in the waste of birds and animals or be found hidden deep beneath the soil when the roots push through, but maybe they won't, and it won't be immediate. And we're not in charge. So I wonder why is it so hard for humans to remember that when you pull people from their home and drop them somewhere new and unfamiliar, that they won't likely find the proper nourishment to establish roots that they may feel burned by exposure without the protective shelter of culture, that they need stable stocks to grab a hold of. It's easier to think about these ideas as a distant forest and a separate ecosystem from this moment. My childhood was in forests and oceans. The smell of cedar and salt water transports me to another time and place. It's the smell of my first home. But there are other things that are like home, other places where the web is strong, where the parts are not only interconnected, but they also know they are interdependent. They know that they rely on one another not just as a stock to lean on, but also as beings who sway together in the breeze. There is growing, but there is also dancing. There is beauty, as well as planting and harvest. We know that planting ourselves alone in a field or in straight rows, but not touching, we may grow and survive and even sometimes do well, but planting ourselves in the garden of community, finding people and resources with whom we are true companions encourages our fullest potential to emerge. The pandemic has reminded us that we need more than food and water, shelter, and the ability to work. We need connection. We need the proper nourishment for our minds and hearts and our spirits and our full well-being. We can be well independently and we are more likely to thrive in a community forest. Imagine yourself as a part of a harmonious web. So I'm gonna stop for a second. Just imagine yourself as a part of a web. There are strands going from you to each of the parts of the web that you are related to. What does it look like? Where are you in the web? Just grab that image. My first inclination is to imagine myself at the center of some kind of spidery spiral web. But there is no center really. No spider who spun in a circle with edges, no web that begins and ends. 
the interdependent web is a living, breathing, symbiotic sparkle that joins all life. I'm a part of it and you're a part of it, but we're not the point of it. We're specks that move around depending on the moment and the project. One minute I might be the planter, another minute I'm telling you a story. I'm walking the dog through the snow down the busy street, noticing the shrubs that were fooled by the warm weather in February, trying to stay upright on the ice of which there seems to be an abundance, wondering where the coyotes are and the hares. It's been a while since I've seen a magpie, but I know they're still here. And I think of the dandelions waiting for their turn to poke through. I love the dandelions the most, unpopular as that may be with the tidy neighbors. I loved the imagery of the fourth sister as interdependent as the corn and bean and squash, helping them to find one another, benefiting from their abundance, saving seeds to do it again next year, knowing that together they are a cycle, they are a set, they are a team, and the soil and the sun also matter, and the water and the wind, and all the seeds in the world won't work if we plant them in the middle of that busy street. Not unless maybe we take the street back. Maybe some of the streets need to be reclaimed. We have so many ways that we distance ourselves from the web and exist in smaller and smaller spaces as if the web moved around us but was not a part of us. Forgetting that we can't be separate, even if we hide. There are risks for choosing interdependence. And we have to choose it, really, for it to succeed. We can't opt out. It doesn't work that way. But we do have to opt in. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Isn't that kind of funny? We can't opt out of the interdependent web. It just carries us along with it, whether we know it or not. But we have to opt in if we want to succeed and we want the web to thrive. Otherwise, it's a web of chance, the web of neglect, a lie of omission. But at least we can pretend if we take that tack. To opt in to interdependence, we risk having our hearts broken over and over again. And yet it's the love that spills from broken hearts that mends us up again. It's a circle, a cycle, interdependent. This work we do coming together is such a courageous act, choosing to care about one another, choosing to care about the planet, choosing to care, risking heartbreak, holding one another like green holds orange until it's time for orange to hold green. Or another principle shows up with muffins or signs for the protest march. Maybe we spend time each, may we spend time each day in resonance with the vibration of our interdependent web of all existence. May we continuously risk opting in. May we be beacons of love and light to all who need it. May all be well. Blessed be.
Now let's bring our candles and chalices forward for our closing words. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We are sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builder of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We put out these flames, but we keep the light and love ablaze within as we opt in again and again to the interdependent web of which we are truly a part. Blessed be. We're now going to hear our closing song, The Oneness of Everything, played by Rebecca Patterson. Does my soul.
I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, you're now going to be invited to join a breakout room for virtual coffee hour. If you'd like to remain in the center, you can simply decline that invitation and stay in the main room. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you Maddie. That was really great. It's so exciting to have one of our newest members be join the service leader team. I think we will see more of Maddie. And when Lori puts a baseball metaphor in the chat, you know something good happened, right? Thanks, Annie. Thank you all for all the kindness in the chat this morning. <laughs>